for one, this was super awesome. I got to go on a cruise, the very first cruise I've ever been on in my life. And, and even better, it was the, only the second vacation I've ever been on in my life. And my wife and I never got a honeymoon. So we got to leave our kids at home and, and go on this cruise. And uh, actually, Gary and Heather Tribble went with us. And so when people say, so what was it like, uh, you know, going on vacation with uh, Gary and Heather? And I say, the, the only way I can describe it is it was literally going to hell and back. <laughs> and I can say that because she's right here. And I have pictures to prove it, Caleb. If you want to put a picture up there, you can see right there. There's Gary right in front of the hell post office in uh, Grand Cayman. It's this little town. In Grand Cayman, there's another picture. Uh, here's Gary and I on the beach in hell. <laughs> Gary's throwing up some gang signs. <laughs> and I'm just trying to figure out how I got there. <laughs> so it really was, it really was going to hell and back. And well, what else we got up there, Caleb? Okay, so this was in uh, Florida, same trip. Uh, there, there was these iguanas. The only person that would try to help me catch them was Heather. And I, I actually did end up getting a hold of one. It was pretty cool. They were all over. So that was exciting for me because I like that kind of stuff. This is a spider that I almost ran into trying to catch iguanas. And uh, this is a banana spider. And I, and I know that they're not considered dangerous, so I, was, I wanted to hold it. But my wife wouldn't let me. She's like, if you get bit by this thing and it ruins our vacation, I will kill you. So she's far more terrifying in the spider, so I didn't, I didn't hold it. Okay, I, I got to ride a dolphin. That was like, uh, you know, something I've always wanted to do is just get close to a dolphin. Got to do that. Uh, here's one of Odessa. She's getting a little smooch. Her picture, riding the dolphin, she looked terrified. So she picked this one instead. It was pretty awesome. Okay, here's Odessa holding a baby green sea turtle. That's really, really cool to me. This was in uh, Grand Cayman. We got to see sea turtles. Got to hold a baby one. Uh, here's another picture of some sea turtles. Those are more. There's like hundreds of them. And then the next one, this is a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. And so when we were going through, the guy said, do not touch these because if it bites you, we won't be able to get it off. So guess what I did? Yeah, as soon as he turned around. So, so they, they, he turned around. They started walking away with the crowd. And I went... And then I ran up to Odessa and I said, Odessa, I touched your Ridley sea turtle. She said, what? You weren't supposed to touch it. They said not to touch it. And I said, well, they shouldn't have been dangling it in front of me like that. <laughs> of course I'm going to touch it. When am I going to have another chance to do that? So I got to touch a Ridley sea turtle. Um, is there any more up there, Caleb? Okay. Uh, uh, oh, this is, for, this, is, this is for something else. So I got, to, uh, I got to swim with these giant stingrays. We got to do all this kind of cool stuff, you know, be on this cool boat. We went, we went under the water in this boat and got to tour a, a, a shipwreck and all of this stuff. We ate snails on the, on the ship, was, and they were actually really good. And it was like the best week of my life, literally it was. It was so much fun. But here's the thing. Not everything that happened in 2017 was so fun. You guys remember, uh, some of you will remember one day I came to church and I wasn't feeling good. And, and Gary again, Gary's just always around, man. Gary, uh, they, they teamed up on me, made me go to the doctor, right? So I went in, uh, I was feeling really, really bad. The doctor, he literally listened to my lungs with a stethoscope and said, what's wrong? I said, my stomach hurts. He's like, you have a tummy ache, go home. And I was like, what? No, he, he said, you have gastritis. I'm like, no, I don't think that's what it is, man. It's, it's really bad. And so he sent me home. I was embarrassed because I thought I was just a wimp. And then everybody was going to think I was a wimp. Odessa put it on Facebook that it was just gastritis. Everybody thought I was a wimp. <laughs> so the day went on. Uh, I got closer to youth, and I just started feeling worse and worse and worse. And it got so bad, man. I, I, I was telling the story the other day, and I said, I think I might have passed out. And Zoe said, I think you did because you were just laying on the couch and not moving. I was like, what? You didn't do anything? She's like, I didn't know what to do. I said, why didn't you go get your mom? She was kind of like, hmm. Yeah, maybe I could have done that. So I went back to the doctor. I was in the emergency room. They told me again, it probably is just gastritis. I mean, I could barely walk into the place, right? 
They thought I was drunk, I think, because they kept asking me to empty my pockets. Like, I'm not emptying my pockets. I'm dying. I'm pretty sure I'm dying. So the doctor says, yeah, it probably was gastritis. We're waiting for one more test, and then uh, we're going to send you home. And I'm like, man, I can't believe this. So then he came back up, back in, super apologetic. He said, okay, it's not gastritis. My bad. <laughs> you, have, you have some pr- a pretty bad case of pancreatitis, which is horrible. I know that uh, Gerald knows what it's like because he's had it, and it feels like you're going to die, right? They said it's one of the most painful things you can go through. I tried to get the doctor to write me a note so I could show my wife saying that it was worse than childbirth. <laughs> but he, he looked over at my wife, and he said, I'm not going to do that because uh, he was scared of her too. <laughs> Didn't do it. So that's what that picture was. That's uh, when I got home. This is my puppy. Her name is Briar. I call her my princess baby angel from heaven. <laughs> Odessa disagrees with me, but she's wrong about a lot of stuff. She's a cat person. <laughs> so I got to come home. I got to lay on the couch for like two days. And then I was supposed to go to youth camp where I was the rec director. I couldn't go because I was sick. I was super bummed about that. It was a week-long camp. I got, had to send our kids with my wife, and I didn't get to go. Then I had to make up getting ready for the fireworks stand because I was sick. And so I started working basically 12 to 17 hours a day for about three weeks straight. Caleb knows because he was there a lot of it. There was at least three times during that when I thought I was pretty sure I was going to die. And I think Caleb thought I was going to die too, but I didn't. Worked really hard through that. It was terrible. As soon as fireworks got over, two days before fireworks got over, I got a call and heard that two of my nieces were in a car accident. And then a couple hours later, I got a call saying that my 14-year-old niece didn't make it. Got done with fireworks, went straight to Nebraska for a funeral of my 14-year-old niece. Is probably the worst month of my life, everything that happened in that month. The very best week of my life, one of the very, very worst months of my life, all in the same year. Anybody, anybody have anything that was just super, super awesome that happened to you in 2017? Like you're like, this was the coolest thing, one of the coolest things ever. Anybody? Yes. Yeah, you can talk for her. Awesome. Even Tim was like, woo, paying the bills. Anybody else something? Oh, yeah. You, I, I was going to say, you better say something. <laughs> what, what was good for you in 2017? Well, I went through a roller coaster first, but now I got married. Woo. woo. And had the most amazing Halloween themed cosplay ever. I saw pictures. I was on a cruise with Gary and Heather and all this. So I didn't get to make it. But she got married. That's awesome. Anyone else? Something just totally, totally great that happened in 2017? <laughs> it was fun, right? <laughs> Let me ask you another question. You don't have to answer this out loud. You don't have to raise your hand. How many of you had something in 2017 that you'd rather just forget about? Me too. A lot of people actually hate this time of year. I've read about it a bunch of times. 
New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, people don't look forward to it. They, they really kind of hate it. You know, uh, you get the Scrooges around Christmas and stuff like that. But New Year's Day, there are people that dread, absolutely dread New Year's Day and New Year's Eve. And it's because for a lot of people, uh, except for maybe, maybe some people's birthdays, this is like the one time a year where we kind of take the time and we look back at everything we accomplished during the year, and we also look back at everything that we failed at during the year. And people hate this time of year. We look at the things that we should have done different or that we could have done better, or we just remember bad things that happened during the year that we just don't want to remember. We remember things that at the end of 2016, We said that we were going to do differently, and now we're looking back and realizing that some of those things haven't really changed that much. It's another year in the books, another year that we're never going to get back, and to a lot of us, it's just so dissatisfying looking back at the past year. That's why a third of all Americans make a New Year's resolution every year. A third of all Americans make a New Year's resolution every single year. And uh, that's because they're dissatisfied. They're dissatisfied with what happened the year before. And do you know how many of those people keep their New Year's resolution? (laughs) Most New Year's resolutions are over within three to 21 days. Three days to three weeks. That's that's how long they last typically. And less than 8% of the 33% of Americans actually follow through with their New Year's resolution. That's interesting, right? Maybe they weren't as dissatisfied as they thought they were. I want you to think about that for a while. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. So we're going to be jumping all around in Ephesians. Uh, Mitch said that I had to have at least a minimum of eight Bible verses. I have 87. I'm just kidding. No, but we're going to be, we're going to be jumping around through Ephesians 4 and 5. We're going to be kind of going back and forth. But I want you to, look, go home and read two chapters, okay? The whole thing. Ephesians 4 and 5. It's kind of like this really good uh, New Year's sermon. I, I, I could have just read it to you and, and just made that my message. It's so good. But we're going to be hopping around, and we're going to start with Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. And this is just such a great, encouraging thing. If you want advice for the new year, here it is in three verses. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise but is wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And you are dismissed. (laughs) I'm just kidding, but what a great set of scriptures to start the new year with, don't you think? What a great message in just a couple of verses. Do you know why people, even us, a lot of us, were so dissatisfied with 2017? You know why? Because we didn't make the most of every opportunity. That's where regret comes from. That's where dissatisfaction comes from. We didn't make the best of every opportunity. Let me ask you this. Do you know why we didn't make the best of every opportunity? The Bible says right there, because the days are evil. Hmm. I spent a lot of time thinking about those words this week. The days are evil. This is really good if I do say so myself. You might want to write this down. Why are the days evil? Because at one point in your life, they'll convince you that you have lots and lots of time left to do something different and to change. And then all of a sudden one day, 
just like that, they'll convince you it's too late. The days are evil. They're evil because there's not that many of them, and they go by really, really fast. I remember when my dad turned 40 years old. I thought, my dad is practically my grandfather now. <laughs> He's so old. Like I just, it was like all of a sudden he was an old man to me. Guess what? <laughs> In about three years, I'm going to be 40, and I still think it's old. But it went by really, really fast. I remember driving my dad to the doctor um, when he could still talk. And he said, you know, it's just so weird. It just feels like I really haven't lived that long yet. I just feel like I haven't lived that long yet. The days are evil. They go by really fast. Sometimes the days will just sneak right past you. How many people, be honest, how many people say 2017 snuck right past me? Raise your hand. Go ahead. Listen, I, I'm, I'm totally serious here. I want, you to, I want you to hold on to that feeling, okay? Where did 2017 go? Hold on to that feeling. This is what David said in Psalm 39. What am I up to now, Mitch? Four or something? <laughs> this is what David said in Psalm 39, four. Lord, make me to know my end, and what is the measure of my days, that I may know how frail I am. Life is so short. It's so fragile. And in Psalm 90, 10, it says, the days of our lives are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they are 80, if you're Superman, you're Gene, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Life is so short. James 4.14, it says, you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a little bit, a little time, and then vanishes away. Some translations say it's here one moment, and then it's gone the next. Here one moment, and then gone the next. God seems to be trying pretty hard, I think, throughout Scripture to convince us that your life is not that long. You guys see that? God is telling us, guys... You don't have that long. It's a vapor. Here one moment and then gone the next. It's depressing. <laughs> Listen, the devil is a thief. If he can steal your time away from you, if he can steal days from you, years away from you, he's got you right where he wants you. Because you don't have that long. I know it took a while. Well, let me go. Let me just mention one more thing. I think, uh, again, God is trying to convince us how short our life is when Paul describes our life as a Christian as a race. That's fast. Actually, more like a sprint, if you really look into it. It's more like a sprint. Our life as a Christian, it's like a sprint, real quick. took a while to get to this point. I'm going to give you the uh, name of the message today, the title for our, our New Year's message. Some of you are like, man, 2017 snuck by, but this message is taking forever. <laughs> Too bad. The name for today's New Year's message is lose some weight. <laughs> Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. Okay. I'm going to explain, Okay. I want you to imagine that you're going to like a track meet, right? 
I, I love going to track meets, like for high school track meets, because I like to watch people fall and stuff like that <laughs> and trip over, uh, you know, the hurdles. I know it's horrible, but, man, it's funny. Anyway, imagine that you're going to, like, this track meet, and they're getting ready to run the 100-meter dash. This is a sprint that's won or lost in usually less than 10 seconds. A sprint. And you see all of these runners, they're getting ready. They're taking off their sweats. They're stretching. They're making sure that their cleats are clean. They're taking deep breaths, getting ready to run the sprint, getting ready. And then you notice this one guy, and he's wearing a pair of Caleb's cargo pants. And he's got everything that he brought with him, his school books, all of this stuff. And he's loading it all into his backpack. Loading it in the backpack. When his backpack gets full, he starts shoving all of his pockets full of stuff, putting more and more, as much as he can get into his pockets. And then, if that's not enough, he's got stuff that he's trying to carry under both of his arms, and he's getting ready to run a sprint. How do you think he's going to do? Probably not very good. Hey, he, he might even get across, but can you say that he's going to run it well? No. Some of us are running this race, even this sprint, and we're carrying these things with us that are weighing us down, slowing us down, causing us to stumble, and even threatening whether we're going to make it across or not. You guys get what I'm saying? We need to lose the weight. God's plan for you for the new year, is a new you. A new you. A new me. Your part is to join him in making a new you. How do we do that? Maybe by start losing weight. I said New Year's resolutions have to do with being dissatisfied. I want to encourage you guys, be dissatisfied. But be so dissatisfied that it spurs you to action. There's a big difference. Big difference. We're dissatisfied with all kinds of things, but not enough to make us do anything about it. If you're going to be dissatisfied, be so dissatisfied that it spurs you to action. If you want to lose weight, it takes action. We're going to look at some things, maybe, maybe even a couple things that you weren't really thinking of when it comes to... Uh, losing the weight and the first thing is change the way you think back in Ephesians 4 verse 22 and 23 says you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self you do it which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your mind or changing the way that you think. Before, he said, understand what God's will is. Now he's saying, do what you were taught. You guys catch that? Put off your old corrupt self and be made new by changing the way that you think. So many of us are weighed down by what goes on in your head. Even the stuff that nobody knows about. The places that your mind takes you is weighing you down. Even what your imagination does sometimes, guys. Let's be honest. Things that shouldn't be happening in here. And it weighs us down like crazy. If you look up my New Year's resolutions and you want to see like the top New Year's resolutions. There's always a couple of things like uh, um, get out of debt and then maybe uh, spend more time with family. But there's not very many of those things. You know what the top New Year's resolutions are usually? I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to look better. I'm going to get more fit. It's that kind of stuff. And I also found out this week that those are the most successful New Year's resolutions. Can you believe that? And it, and it seems, <laughs> seems hard to a lot of us, but those are the most 
successful New Year's resolutions. They have to do with getting in shape, uh, things to do with your body. Of the very few successful New Year's resolutions, they're about looking better and feeling better. They're not about spending more time with their family. They're not about being a better person. You guys get that? You know what that tells me? A lot of people, I guess in in the United States at least, care more about how they look and about how they feel than just about anything else. (laughs) Anything. Because these are the most successful ones. I thought that was interesting. They'll cut carbs, cut out sugar, caffeine, stop smoking. They'll go on special diets and find low-calorie meals on every single menu that they find. There are people that can find the discipline to control what goes in their mouth and makes its way to their stomach and maybe their hips. And, and, And a lot of times people can be successful at it, but it's so hard to find the discipline to control what goes in through your eyes and in through your ears and makes it to your mind and makes it to your heart. It's interesting. Let's be honest, guys. A lot of us don't even try that. I don't, I'm not trying to be mean. I just know it's true. You know, I've been there. I've been there. Don't even try to control what goes into your eyes and your ears. Imagine if you came here once a week. We've talked about this kind of stuff before. You come here once a week, we feed you like this super, super healthy meal. And, and you eat this really, really healthy meal on a Sunday. And then the whole rest of the week, you're eating Twinkies and Spam. And that's it. <laughs> Is the one healthy meal that you had on a Sunday even going to be really beneficial anymore? Is it? You want to lose weight? You want to lose the weight that things in your mind puts on you? Take control of what you're allowing in it. You guys get that? Man, we just don't do it. Take control of what's going in there. The next step to losing weight, believe it or not, is change the way you speak. People will find the discipline to control what's going in their mouth, but they have a really hard time controlling what comes out of it. Right? (laughs) God places a lot of importance on words. We were talking about this in youth a couple weeks ago, just some of the youth leaders and stuff, how powerful words are. He... He puts so much importance on words. This this, uh, is something maybe you had not thought of, but it, it, it means something to me. He puts so much importance on words that that's what he picked to create everything. He could have blinked his eyes. He could have snapped his fingers. He could have just thought about it, breathed it into existence, but he didn't. He spoke words to create everything. The things that come out of your mouth can cause you to stumble and weigh you down. You don't believe me? How many of you have ever said something and then immediately regretted it? (laughs) Kristen's like, did that this morning to Larry? (laughs) Hey, let me ask you another question. You You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to answer this. How many of you have said something years ago? And it's still weighing you down because you feel so guilty about what you said. Still, years later. That's a lot of people. I, I hear about that stuff a lot. And I said this thing to my parent, and they're not even here anymore. I said this to this person, and, and it's never been the same. And it affects you for years and years and years. Maybe the rest of your life. Words are powerful. And unfortunately, you guys have all learned this lesson. Once 
they leave your mouth, there's nothing you can do about it. Right? You can say you're sorry all you want. Might not mean anything to somebody. Jesus pointed out that the mouth and the heart are very intimately connected. In Matthew, he says, out of the overflow of your heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of your heart, the mouth speaks. If cruel words are leaving your mouth, you have a heart problem. If you're a liar, you have a heart problem. Listen, if you're telling people stuff about other people that aren't uplifting, even if it's true, if you're doing that, you have a heart problem. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Hey, did you guys hear this about AJ? I just want you to pray about it, that's all. <laughs> but it's so, such a deep, dark secret about AJ. Man, it's so embarrassing, but I'm not gossiping. I just want you to pray about it. So say, hey, hey, keep AJ in your prayers. Why? Yeah, you don't need to know. You can do that, right? AJ doesn't want me to tell you his business, especially if it's not uplifting. Don't do it. Ephesians says, go home and read all of Ephesians 4 and 5. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. It goes on in 29 to say, let no corrupt, let no corrupt word Proceed your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers, or that it's going to benefit the people that hear it. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks. So I'm going to. Okay, do you, do you think cursing falls into filthiness? I, I, I know it's, it's going to make some of us mad, but do you think cursing falls into filthiness? I think it does. Let none of it leave your mouth. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of going off on this, but it, it really just, I mean, it just, it makes me sad, man, when I, when I hear People have been saved for a long time, and they're just using language that you don't need to use. Or, or they even put it on Facebook sometimes. I'm like, that didn't slip out of your fingertips. Come on, you, you typed that out. You don't know where the backspace button is? Come on, man. You know, guys, words are important. We, we act like they're not, but they are. God tells us over and over again. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Change the way you speak. Change the way you speak. You can learn to control yourself. I have a seven-year-old son who never cusses, and he has no self-control whatsoever. He can't even sit still for 30 seconds, but I don't hear him cussing. You have more willpower than my little son, I'm, I'm telling you. Anyway. Don't be mad at me. I don't make the news, I just report it. Your words are to be used to give thanks to God. They're be, you, to be used to worship. They're to be used for the benefit of other people, to uplift people, to encourage people. Words are important. What you say is super, super important. There are words that absolutely should be coming out of your mouth that sometimes don't and there's words that shouldn't be coming out of your mouth that do and, and here's the other thing man 
Your words might not just be weighing you down. We know that. Words are powerful. How many of you guys are, are weighed down by somebody else's words? How many of you know somebody that maybe is weighed down because of words that came out of your mouth? All of us. Makes it that much more important. The next thing. Change the way you think. Change the way you speak. Change the way you act. And then uh, I meant to put another sign in parentheses at the bottom. Even when nobody's watching. Well, that sucks. <laughs> that makes it a lot harder. <laughs> Change the way you act. Even when nobody is watching. In James 2.17, it says, This also, also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Make the most of every opportunity. Um, we talk about this in, in youth a lot because uh, you guys are going to hear more about this in the future. Uh, I, I was going to talk about it more today, but I just kind of felt like God was leading me a different direction. We're, we kind of are launching this thing that we call the Do More Project. And you can look it up, uh, the DoMoreProject.com. It's, it's cool. It's, it's a cool thing. And, 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 and it's all about doing. It's all about doing more, take, making the most of every opportunity. And we even made these cool little uh, business cards. They just say the DoMoreProject.com. And you guys will eventually have an opportunity to get a hold of those and, you know, use them for something good and give it to somebody. Like, man, I, I just don't know how to share the gospel. Okay, well, maybe just give them this card. Let them read it for the first time because we have it all on, on this website. Do something. Do something. You know, one example I use a lot is like maybe you're going through the, the drive-in at McDonald's and you say, hey, I, I want to pay for the person behind me and just hand them this card with the intention of sharing the love of Jesus with them, even if it's just them going to a website saying, why did somebody do this for me? That's just the easy, easy, easy stuff. Make the most of every opportunity. I don't have to even really get into this that much, guys, about change the way you act, because you know what I'm talking about. You know better than I do what I'm talking about. I know the stuff I need to change. I don't know all the stuff that Alan needs to change, but he does. Guess what? Holy Spirit does. He'll tell you. If you're brave enough to listen. Not always easy. There's an author named Aramis, and this is what he says. I really like this. You've probably heard this before, but I add a little bit to it. It says, we sow our thoughts, our thoughts, and we reap our actions we sow our actions, and we reap our habits. We sow our habits, and we reap our character. We sow our character, and we reap our destiny. And then I add, we sow our destiny, and you leave your legacy. What do you want your legacy to be? What do you want your legacy to be? Because here's the deal. You don't have very long to leave it. You guys get me? Days are evil. They're evil. They'll convince you you have all this time. You have all this time. And then all of a sudden they'll say, you waited too long. It's too late. And so we do nothing to change. What do you want your legacy to be? I know there's things in my life that I don't want to be part of my legacy. Tomorrow's not promised. You have right now. Right now. That's all you've got. And I think you guys have seen, God tries really hard to convince us of that. Don't wait. Don't wait. I, I think uh, New Year's resolutions are kind of stupid. Because we don't keep them, and it's all about a, a moment in time. 
you know, oh, I get to start over because it's a new year. So what? So what? The clock changes over. It's not about a new moment in time. It's about a new Daryl. You guys get that? And Daryl doing the things that he knows he has to do, the things that he learned, understanding God's will for him, and doing, changing the things that he knows he's supposed to change right now. It's not about a new year. It's about a new you. Change the way you act. You know when uh, most sprints are won? Has anybody ever ran track? <laughs> I can't tell what that means, Karen. Karen was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Emily, do you know when most sprints are won? When are they won? <laughs> Early in the morning. <laughs> when it's really cold outside. Winter, what? He's right. When it starts. Sprints are won a lot of times by how good you start. Hey, let me, let me, let me tell you guys. You want uh, 2018 to end good? Let me give you a little bit of advice. Start it really good. Because it's going to sneak past you. Remember you said, yeah, 2017, it just snuck past me. In the blink of an eye. 2018 is going to also. You want to end 2018 good? Start it off good. I, I would be willing to bet that a lot of people in here that they say, man, this year has just not been very good. I'd be willing to bet that a lot of us didn't start 2017 very good either. We didn't do anything to make it better. Change the way you think. Change the way you speak. Change the way you act. Go home and read Ephesians 4 and 5 because there's, it's full of stuff. Full of stuff that make you go, oops. Scroll past that one, right? How do you start 2018 right? Very, very familiar verse, verses from Philippians. Philippians 3, starting in verse 12. This is Paul speaking. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on. He's describing that part of the sprint where you're trying so hard and you're leaning forward, giving it everything you have. I remember when Taylor was in track. Is Taylor in here? She's not an athlete, guys. She is not an athlete. And, and she would get done with a, a race, and I said, did you do your best? She said, yeah. I said, did you throw up? No. Maybe you could have ran a little bit harder. I don't know. <laughs> right? Paul is talking about that, that, you know, every muscle in your body and leaning forward with everything that you have. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Here it is, guys. You've heard this from me before. Forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind. 2017. Reaching. Again. Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for which the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He's talking about straining, reaching pressing on, doing everything you can, man. What does he say? Forgetting what's behind me. You know, this is a long message for me. <laughs> Tony just went. <laughs> I'm going to have a talk after. No, I'm just kidding. Listen, I heard this analogy once before, and I really like it. 
You know why there's such a big difference in the size of a rear view mirror and a windshield? Because a rear view mirror is meant to be glanced at. And you're supposed to focus ahead of you. You know, maybe there's things in 2017 that you want to glance back at and learn from, but don't live there. Come on. If you screwed up, you screwed up. Repent and move on. Pressing for what's ahead. If you did stuff that's really, really good, for crying out loud, forget about it. What are you going to do? I used to work with this guy uh, at this last job I had, and he knew I was a Christian, and any time that he would hear me talking about God, he would sit down and tell me about he, how he did a missions trip to Africa when he was 20 years old. He would talk and talk and talk about it, and I would say, shut up, man. What are you going to do with the next 30 or 40 years of your life, dude? I'm going to live in nostalgia. <laughs> I went on a missions trip. I did my part. Come on. If that guy would forget about that or glance back and learn from it, look what I could do again. What, how can I learn from that? How can I do more? You know, Kira and Clarissa, they went on a missions trip to Haiti. That's awesome. Don't dwell on it. Don't live there. Don't live in nostalgia. Oh, I, I did such good things for God back then. And, and put my feather in my hat. Come on. Forget about it. Forget about the good stuff. Forget about the bad stuff. What are you going to do in 2017? That's the stuff that gets me excited. I know that's the stuff that gets Pastor Chris excited. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Act differently. Do something. Do something. Do something for the kingdom of God. Do something scary and something that you're not 100% sure you're going to succeed at. Do something. Right? Days are evil. Evil. Life is a vapor. Skillet said it too. I'm a vapor. Here one moment and gone the next. God is trying to convince us, guys. I think, I think this is the biggest part of this message that God is trying to get us into our heads and into our hearts. We don't have that long. We really don't. I mean, talk to anybody. If you talk to my dad, at the very end, he, he said, man, it feels like I haven't even been alive that long. Don't have that long. So, I know it's late. Um, you can have the worship team come up. Um, didn't really know how I was going to close this today. But I just, I just want to give you an opportunity. I mean, I know, I know it's late, and you can leave if you want to. But here's the thing, man. I want to pray with you. Anybody else who wants to pray can, can come and pray for you too. But if it's just me, I'll do it. I'll stay. If you have been struggling with something, and 2000, the end of 2016, you said, this is the end of this. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to change this about me. I'm going to change this about me. And now you're looking back and you're like, I hate this time of year. I hate this time of year because I said I was going to change this and it never changed. If that's you, you don't have to tell me what it is. You can if you want to. You don't have to tell me. I'm not going to announce it to the congregation. <laughs> okay? But if you want to pray about that, then I, I just want to open the altar for that time, okay? And, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray right now and, and really just dismiss you, okay? But if you go, man, I got to change this, and it's so stinking hard. Come up, hey, be dissatisfied. Be dissatisfied. We want to pray with you. We want 2018 to be different. Look ahead so I'm going to pray and then you guys can leave if you want if you want to stay and pray with people that would be awesome too and if you want prayer then just head on up as we're praying and then you guys can you guys can leave go on home let's pray
Lord God, we just thank you for your presence this morning. God, we're thankful that you're still in the business of making new creations out of us. But God, I pray right now that every person in here, including myself, God, if there's things about us that we need to change, even the things that we're not thinking of right now, God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would start to reveal those things to us. God, make us dissatisfied. Help us stay dissatisfied with where we're at and look at where we can go and change the things that we need to change to get there. Oh God, I pray that 2018 is different for people. God, that we're going to look for more opportunities and we're going to take advantage of every opportunity and make the most of every opportunity. If it's sharing the gospel, if it's doing something kind for somebody. God, I pray that you just put a burning in our spirit to do those things. God, help us to forget about the past, the bad things, God, as, as we repent of those things. God, help us to know we're forgiven. God, even the good things, Lord, help us to remember those and learn from them, Lord, but help us not live there and dwell in that and just focus on what else we can do for you and for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Happy New Year, guys. I'm going to shut my mic off. You guys are dismissed if you want to go, but I'm going to be here. And I want to pray with you. If you're struggling with stuff, because there's a lot of us that are. It's not embarrassing, because everybody does it. If you want to come up and get prayer, if you want to stay in prayer with people, pray with people, then I'll encourage you to do that. If not, you guys are dismissed. We love you guys. We'll see you next year. Thank you.